Get ready to celebrate God's call to go. Here's your weekly dose of heartwarming encouragement for the missionary in all of us. Welcome to Missions Change My Life. Now here's your host, Pastor Kevin. Good morning. Welcome to Missions Change My Life. This is Pastor Kevin. It is January the 12th, 2021. I want to continue to say Happy New Year to you. And hopefully you were able to catch last week's episode with Pastor B as we heard his story, his testimony, his call into the ministry. He is one of our primary partners in India. Uh, we have 12 partners all across the country of India, and he is the one located in Chennai. And we are so thankful to God for this partnership that we get to do life and ministry with he and his family. And today he is back on the show. Pastor B, welcome to Missions Change My Life. Hi. Hello, everybody. So last week, you really got an opportunity to meet Pastor B. Uh, many of you have probably gone over and stayed in his home and served beside of him and worked there in the church planning projects that Global Hope India has initiated along with in partnership with Pastor B. But you got to hear his story and his calling into ministry. This week, I'm so excited that Courtney is going to introduce us to the church planter that Pastor B has become. Courtney, thanks for being on the call. Yeah, let's get to know Pastor B as a church planter. Let's dive right in. One of our greatest praises just being a partner with Pastor B as Global Hope India is getting to see God fulfill a dream of planting 20 churches by 2020. So why don't you just tell us all about that. Tell us about how that first started. When did you first get that vision on your heart? Like I shared last time, you know, uh, last week, I always mm-hmm. had the desire to plant churches. I don't know why. Uh, whenever I went to a new place, I would think of planting a church there. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, I, ne- I had never been to a village before I came into my before I came into the ministry because I was mm-hmm. born and brought up in a city. I never had the opportunity to visit a village and I never had experienced uh, the rural life personally. But after coming to the ministry, I got chances to visit villages and sometimes uh, visit remote villages where people lack basic facilities like electricity, water, toilet and things like that. And then uh, whenever I visited those villages, you know, I started developing a desire to plant churches in these villages. Okay, one day when I was just lying on my bed after praying, after I, was, I was praying for God about my next step. I know I was, I, I know I was called into ministry. I know I was called to be a pastor. But then I was God. I was asking God uh, what my specific calling was. You know, I I knew I, I God uh, God had called me to be a pastor. But then I wanted God uh, talk God to talk to me specifically about my calling and my. Uh, vision and then while I was praying and then just lying on my bed after prayer I was just lying on my bed and then uh, all of a sudden I just started the number 2020 flashing in front of my eyes it happened twice the number 2020 wow. flashing in front of my mm-hmm. eyes and mm-hmm. then uh, that kept bothering me a lot because I did not I did not know what that really meant and then I started asking God what it was and then mm-hmm. uh, I started praying about it very seriously uh, very seriously what 2020 meant because mm-hmm. uh, that was very strange you know uh, it was like uh, I think it was eight years back, somewhere, somewhere around 2012 wow. or 13 <laughs> summer. Yeah, it was eight years back. And then I started asking God very seriously what it, what it really meant. And then mm-hmm. after uh, developing the desire to plant churches and villages, after after praying for weeks, and then uh, I realized the Lord was putting a burden in my heart to plant 20 churches by the year mm-hmm. 2020. And that wow. was uh, uh, confirmed by a couple of, I mean, uh, pastors. They prayed over mm-hmm. me and then said, you have a specific vision. And then God mm-hmm. is going to use you in a specific way. And then and that's how I got to know. And I realized that God was really putting a burden in my heart to plant 20 churches by the year 2020. That word, that letter, that number 20 was so clear, you know, in my mind. I did not know that. It was in a vision <laughs> given to you eight years before. That's amazing to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So what did what did the next few years look like? How did how did the churches um, begin getting planted. Was it easy? But um, were there seasons of of difficult times? Um, what did it look like? Uh, it was not planted? at all easy, to be <laughs> frank. <laughs> to be honest, right. it was not at all easy. Yeah. And then because I got the vision, uh, I started writing down in my uh, diary vision mm-hmm. 2020, plan 20 churches by the year 2020. Yeah. And then I did not have money in my hand. I did not have people to help me. I did not have any resources. I was just all alone 
with a piece of paper in my hand and then i started praying uh, god if it's really from you you have to provide for me that was my answer and then uh, sometimes i would ask myself was it really from god or is it was it my own desire i was in a little bit of commotion you know but then after i saw after that you know god started providing for my needs in miraculous ways god providing people he gave me young people to uh, help with me you know help me in transport and things like that and slowly i got everything that i needed and i actually i never lacked anything praise yeah. god how was your faith tested and clearly it was growing in this season but mm. what did the, what did this season of planting churches do for your faith sometimes i would never have money in my hand i would just sit in my room and i just pray to god i think i'll need to share uh, one thing that happened during that okay. uh, hard time you know yeah. actually i was praying for bibles mm-hmm. i never had any connection with any people i never had i i did not have any contacts i mean i did not have any overseas contacts i did not have any uh, foreign people you know white people or things like that you know i was praying for bibles i was in my room i was all over in my room and i was asking god to give me bibles because mm-hmm. i i will actually um, i do a lot of distribution i distribute uh, tracks uh, gospel mm-hmm. tracks and bibles yeah. i i really love that so i just want to go to a uh, go to a uh, i mean a village and then distribute bibles there so i was praying in my room for bibles then after a couple of weeks i received a parcel through post and i had mm-hmm. 50 bibles in that i didn't know who sent that mm-hmm. i never shared anything i never shared about this with any people mm-hmm. but i received a parcel of bibles 50 bibles exactly what wow. i asked for Wow, that's how God so, started providing for yeah, me. Yeah, God really started <laughs> showing up, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. What did the impact of the foreign missionaries did that help start? Um, whenever teams were able to be sent over, did that help with planting churches? Did it, or was it just um, helpful with outreach? What does it look like as a church planter in India to receive <laughs> mission teams? Yes, yeah. Before uh, receiving foreign missionaries, I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, my the kind of it was very slow planting churches was very slow because mm-hmm. uh, we had little uh, we had very little funds and then we mm-hmm. had very little people to i mean very few people to help with and then it was mm-hmm. a very slow process but mm-hmm. after receiving foreign missionaries especially ghi teams we started moving in a very at a great at a great pace you know because mm-hmm. we had everything we had resources we had people to help us uh, like we mm-hmm. had projects like clean water projects and Uh, things like clinics and all things like that so after these things after uh, receiving foreign missionaries after receiving ghi teams they started working at a very great sp- uh, pace and then uh, yeah no turning back since then yeah wow yes so if you're listening to this and you're thinking of going to india to visit pastor b yes, you would be yeah. empowering his ministry and what god is doing there and that's just so wonderful to hear sometimes we hear about mission trips and especially short term teams um as hurting yeah. and how they can kind of cause pain to the indigenous mm. people and the indians and so it is good to hear that they actually helped and that they were you know our teams are able to empower you um, yeah just i just want to add add awesome. one more thing yeah, yeah uh, like uh, especially uh, ghi teams uh, have always been a huge uh, they've always made a huge impact in people's lives in our, our ministry not only by providing financial assistance but also by praying for us are uh, encouraging us uh, in challenging times providing uh, useful resources for us through foreign missionaries uh, missionaries especially through ghi teams we have entered into communities that were very that were close for the gospel uh, that were mm-hmm. hostile for gospel but uh, projects like clean water projects and medical clinics have helped us to go to places that were hostile and share the gospel freely there pastor that's been our vision We've always mm-hmm. wanted to be a blessing to mm-hmm. the church in yeah. India. And w- yeah. as I listened to you and Courtney discuss this, mm-hmm. what came to mind is just the word fuel, that GHI is being used of God to just put fuel upon yeah. the fire that is burning there mm-hmm. in India. It's not that we brought God yeah. to India. God was already at work there. And it's not mm-hmm. that when we leave, God stops working there because God's uh, at work with or without us. But mm-hmm. what we... Yeah. what we want to be used of god to do is just empower that work to really mm. the biblical visual is when moses was in battle and aaron and mm-hmm. ur came and held up moses's hands so that yeah. the yeah. victory could continue and that's what we wanted mm. to do when we met you is just yeah. come alongside you and hold up your hands yes. so that the victory could could continue and god has honored that 
and allowed mm -hmm. us to to really hopefully do some good to to help empower yes. you and your team there. I'm really grateful mm -hmm. yeah. for, for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. GHA has been a huge blessing to us in so many ways. Yeah. Pastor, what would you say? Because there is a concern. You know, it costs 3000 mm -hmm. Think about that. $3,000 for one volunteer to come mm -hmm. over for 10 days to serve you. And that 3000 could yeah. buy a lot of Bibles. So there have mm -hmm. been, obviously, people with legitimate concern. Why not just send the 3000 over for Bibles instead of send yes. the, the believer over to empower the church. And yet yeah. I've seen with my own eyes and you have as well, mm -hmm. the power yeah. of that individual coming. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, yeah. Bibles are needed. Resources are needed. Mm -hmm. But way beyond that is that uh, that mm -hmm. sense of encouragement, that brotherhood, yeah. that family of mm -hmm. God, that Bibles mm -hmm. can't just replace. What would you say mm -hmm. to to people that are just having that debate in their mind, wouldn't money just be mm -hmm. better than spending these resources and travel yeah. and everything to get over there? Mm -hmm. Money is very important. <laughs> but uh, more than that, we need people here. You know, a foreign missionary can easily do what I cannot do here. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, people are so, people are so people are looking for... Uh, real love you know people are uh, looking for someone to come and pray for them mm -hmm. and sometimes when when we go there you know it's not it doesn't make any difference you know they we just look like them we speak like them but when a foreign missionary comes you know he looks very different and they look attractive you know they attack people so easily and then people just go go to them directly um, they love to talk to them and then mm -hmm. they love to be loved by them and then mm -hmm. when when and then even people think, you know, when a foreign missionary comes, you know, it's a big blessing to them. Even mm -hmm. we feel that when a missionary comes into our house, we are blessed. Mm -hmm. And then when a missionary comes to into our ministry, we are so blessed by their, uh, I mean, the, by the presence, the, by the very presence. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, we are blessed by the prayers and then by the presence. Uh, yeah, it makes a huge difference. We need people. Of course, we need money for Bibles and so many projects, but we love to have as many people as possible here in this part of the world. You're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes, hope will arise. And now imagine yourself on the foreign mission field. You and your team are on the bus going to today's programs. After singing a few songs, Pastor Kevin stands to deliver a devotion. Hey team, gather around. Before we go out into the program today, I want to encourage you with this word provision. I want you to hear that word. Let the Holy Spirit bring it into your spirit. Hear your heavenly father declare provision over you. I want you to look at one of the funniest stories in the Bible out of Luke 18 verses 1 through 8. It's the parable of the persistent widow, and it's easy for you and I to miss the humor in it, but just listen. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show them that they should pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her consistent request. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his people who cry out to him night and day? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who will have faith? I want you to allow God to increase your faith about his willingness and his ability to provide. Hear the word provision. You know, in coming on this mission, we had to raise support. And the Bible makes it clear. Either we go or we send or we're disobedient in the Great Commission. 
When we ask people to join our support team, we're empowering people to obey. We are honoring God as we're calling people to send us out as missionaries. You might think, I don't like asking for money, and that's just where we need to get over our pride. Maybe we have the ability to self-pay, and we don't have to ask for money, but even then, we should consider fundraising for projects on our mission. Ask with intentionality of following up. Communicate your goals and your deadlines. Always communicate with gratitude, not desperation. We need to understand that asking is like packing our bags for our mission trip. You remember doing that? But getting our butt in a plane is really what gets us there. When it comes to support raising, many people focus on packing their bags, but not necessarily boarding the plane. But that's what it takes to get here where we are today on the mission trip. We need to understand that provision is is not personal. It's it's it honors God. It's not about us. It's about his character. We need to believe and receive, the Bible says. Where God guides, he provides. We need to celebrate now, not only when our funding comes in. God is faithful now, and so we can give thanks in advance. You remember doing that as we support raised, and now you're here. So look at God's provision. Think of his provision today. Celebrate his provision. And now the test continues as we go out. We're going to face people in desperate need for miracles. And so realize that we serve a God whose character is to be a faithful provider. Think of the word provision today and believe on the Lord. Today, as we go out into our program, I encourage you to think of the word provision. Are you ready? Let's get out there. Ready, set, go. Kevin's new book, Audacious Generosity, was an instant international bestseller on Amazon. Audacious Generosity is now available worldwide on Amazon in paperback, hardback, ebook, and audiobook. You'll find the Audacious Generosity ebook on Apple Books, Kindle, Google Play, and all the popular online ebook stores. The Audacious Generosity audiobook was recorded by Kevin himself, and reviewers are loving it. The audiobook can be found online in over 40 audiobook stores worldwide, including Audible, Apple, Google, and more. Buy Audacious Generosity for yourself. Gift it to your family and friends for the holidays. Discover why Audacious Generosity was an instant bestseller. Audacious Generosity is all about you enjoying a living relationship with God that's fueled by courage, characterized by freedom, and overflowing with audacious generosity. Get your copy today. It's goodbye 2020 and hello 2021. Happy New Year. We all make New Year's resolutions. Lose weight, more exercise, stop a bad habit, start a good habit. Start 2021 with Global Hope India. Start a monthly recurring gift that provides access for more people to hear about Jesus in 2021. Your monthly gift of any size can make the difference in someone hearing about Jesus. Invest in salvations, baptisms, and more churches. Go to globalhopeindia.com forward slash give and start 2021 with Global Hope India. Happy New Year. I yeah. just want to share one story. So there was actually yeah. one of our teams that you hosted, as I said last mm-hmm. week, one of the benefits of us partnering with you in Chennai is because we would get lost in Chennai. And so we've actually, mm-hmm. you've been able to serve some of our teams that were on their way to another GHI partner, but they came in and out yeah. of Chennai. One of these mm-hmm. individuals that this team actually went to your church and worshiped mm-hmm. with you. And then you took them back to the airport and they, they went yeah. on their way, I think to mm-hmm. Arissa. when they got yeah. back yeah. to the U S God had mm-hmm. really stirred one of those individuals toward his work in Chennai. Now he had gone and served another partner and was blessed with that opportunity of ministry. But what the Holy Spirit kept pricking his heart for was to invest financially in the work. Now he gave, you know, obviously he raised and he, it cost him $3,000 to go to India, but his support has multiplied beyond Mm -hmm. way beyond a $3,000 level for the work there in Chennai over the years. And that, that was just a few hours contact 
on the yes. ground in Chennai. This conversation is not about either you go or you give. Yeah. God is able to do both. One of our philosophies is we call people to pray, give, and go. And we find that by going, that's the greatest catalyst to change how people pray and how people give. Mm. And yeah. I can't imagine where GHI would be in 2021 had we just developed a model of we're going to mm -hmm. invite people to pray for India and to give to India, but we're never going to take people to India. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. we would never have seen the miracles of God that we have. Yeah. You know, we've mm -hmm. we've actually exceeded six million dollars for God's work in India. We've taken a thousand yeah. people. And yes, a lot mm -hmm. of money has been spent on travel, but we have raised way mm -hmm. more than what we spent in travel. Yeah for clean water projects, for volleyball camps, for mm -hmm. church buildings, for orphan care, you name it, medical mm -hmm. clinics and, yeah. and beyond. Yeah, I remember uh, that particular team, they spent just like a couple, two or three hours with mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I picked them up from the airport and then they, mm -hmm. they came to our church service. They did the service and then they just went away. I just dropped them at the airport, just like a couple of hours, like two or three hours. And then uh, one of the team members, he went back and then he sponsored for our uh, free tuition center. He, he donated a huge amount for the tuition center. It was a huge blessing. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Yes. So what yeah. did the year 2020 look like for you as a church planter and just a pastor in India during a global pandemic? It was actually very challenging uh, wow. for me personally because, uh, you know, I had to take care of my own family. And also, mm -hmm. I had to take care of 13, 13 pastors and their families. <laughs> that was a big challenge, wow. you know, because, uh, you know, we support them uh, every month. We support, mm -hmm. uh, we support 13 pastors financially every month. So uh, during those pandemic um, time, it was very difficult. But then uh, God provided for us and uh, he provided in a miraculous way, in miraculous ways. Uh, one thing was, you know, people from other churches, people that go to other churches, they started giving the tithes to me, which is which was very unusual. Mm. Yeah. Which will which I think it was so unusual. <laughs> People from other mm. congregations, they just they approached me and then they sent the tithes to me. And through that I started supporting those uh, thirteen my thirteen pastors and their families. And then obviously, yeah, we got a huge amount from GHA as well. And then we started uh, being, helping people around. So it was challenging, but we're never in lack. God provided us. Mm -hmm. exactly. well, and that's a, yeah. it's a reminder that the church is god's people it is not our building mm -hmm. so praise god that exactly he used his yeah. people to you know mm -hmm. provide for for the shepherds that he's raised up as pastors um what was the yeah. highlight of 2020 is there um was it was it planting was it getting to to see god fulfill that vision of the 20th church yeah see uh the highlight was not only uh god uh helped us uh, plant 20 churches. We went beyond that, you know, uh, like uh, usually, you know, how God uh, answers our prayers. He does mm -hmm. uh, more than we asked for. So yeah. we were hoping for 20 churches. We have 25 churches now. Wow. That is <laughs> a highlight. The Lord. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is what has been a hard part of, of the year 2020? What was what was that difficult season? Almost right. everyone are like uh, exp were experiencing hardship in their lives. I mean, in 2020, mm -hmm. and then uh, the hardest part of 2020 is like people, especially Christians, uh, misinterpreting misinterpreting the word of God during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, each one has their own ideas about God, and yeah, it was like it was so difficult to see people, you know, misinterpreting the word of God during the pandemic. Yeah. Whenever fear yeah. sinks in and our faith is tested, uh, that's yeah, exactly, when we yeah. truly see how yeah. we view God in our lives. And mm, yeah, yeah, I think that that's a, a good way to put 2020 for a lot of us. It was a year of, yeah. of being stripped mm -hmm. of a lot of our comforts, even getting yes. to go to, to church for a while. That's, and yeah, so it that's really right. became yeah. about our mm. relationship with I Christ. I definitely and, think we'll look back and yeah. see it as a year of purification. And, mm -hmm. exactly. and, it's a, yeah. and that's a yeah. blessing. You know, that's not mm -hmm. God yes. trying to harm his people. Yeah. Uh, but he, yeah. he's really saying, let me help you here. Let me purify some things. <clears throat> yeah, he needs to bring even, it to the even, service. Yeah, yeah, that helped me. You know, uh, during the pandemic, you know, I was, we couldn't travel as, as we do usually. But so we had to, a lot, lot of time sitting at home. And then uh, it gave us opportunity to spend more time with God. Yeah, gave us yeah. time to read 
Bible and spend time with God. That was really amazing. Yeah. And then I, I finished reading the Bible four times during the pandemic. So. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. A great way to spend your time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm sure that anchored your faith like none mm-hmm. other. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what does 2021 look like? I'm not mm-hmm. asking you to put words in your mouth. You know, is there anything that you mm-hmm. sense in your spirit that God is promising mm-hmm. over 2021? I've been asking God about 2021, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, God spoke to me recently. It's going to be a, like He just gave me one word, you know. Uh, okay. Restored souls, refreshed bodies. That's what God told wow. me. Oh, restored souls, <laughs> refreshed bodies. bodies, refreshed bodies. Yeah. Ah. That I received that. I received yeah. that. <laughs> My word yeah. for 2021 is catch, from mm. the miraculous catch when mm-hmm. when Jesus yeah. said, "Put out the nets." <clears throat> and they brought in a, a huge catch that nearly broke mm-hmm. their nets yeah. and sank their boats. Well, Pastor, we yeah. love you and just thank God mm-hmm. for you and for your yeah. wife and mm-hmm. your, your team. And regardless yeah. of what 2021 looks like, we know mm-hmm. that God is good yeah. and that he's going to continue mm-hmm. to do good things in and through you for his glory. Yeah. And yeah. I honor you as my brother in Christ. I loved, Thank you so I loved much your that. call yeah. to brothers. Uh, I'm older than mm-hmm. you, and maybe you prayed for a younger <laughs> yeah. brother, and you've gotten lots of younger brothers, but you also got an yeah. older brother in me. And so yeah. I'm so Thank grateful so for, that. Yeah. for our yes. partnership. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And yeah. Courtney, thank you for bringing this beautiful story out of Pastor. Yes, uh, through, of course. I hope that Through these two two weeks of interviews. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I was definitely encouraged by it. So thank yeah. you, Pastor, yeah. for taking the time. Thank you so time. much for having me. The call. Thank you yeah. so much. I was blessed. Yeah. I would love for you to close out our show with a word of prayer and just pray blessings mm-hmm. over yeah. the church. When we say the church, we're not just talking about uh, America. Um, or even mm-hmm. India, but the church worldwide. So will you just lead us in prayer as yeah. the Lord leads you? Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for this uh, time of uh, Lord, uh, phone call, Lord, where we could share so many things. And then, Lord, uh, we just praise you for who you are. We thank for all the works you have done in our lives. And then, uh, Father, we just thank you for each and every little thing that you have done in our lives in the past. We believe that you have greater things to come in 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just commit ourselves into hands. And Lord, we just have your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor. Thank you, Courtney, for a job well done and just pulling so much beauty uh, out of Pastor B's story and allowing our audience to to just sit and dine off of this feast. Uh, If you missed last week's episode, I invite you to go back. Pastor B shared his testimony and his call into the ministry with us. And thank you for being a part of this show today. And I look forward to having you back on Missions Change My Life next week. God bless you all. This episode is complete, so head over to globalhopeindia.org for show notes, resources, and opportunities to go to India through GHI. Continue to be radically transformed by God as you live out the Great Commission, and we'll see you again next week here at Missions Change My Life.